approach Sestol script. The air is hot, and the sand of the Gobi Desert whips across the dunes under a baking late Cretaceous sun. You are not watching a monster. You are watching a predator the size of a large turkey, covered from snout to tail in a dense coat of feathers. This is Velociraptor. What have its we arms, here? Long and powerful, are fringed with larger feathers, like the wings of a flightless bird of prey. It moves with a tense, bird-like grace. On its head, darting as it stalks its target, a stout or beaked herbivore called Protoceratops, busy digging at the base of a dune. This is not a pack hunt. The hunter is alone. Suddenly, it explodes from its cover. A 40-pound, 18-kilogram blur of claws and feathers. As it closes the distance in seconds, leaping onto the flank of the much heavier plant eater. Its most famous weapon, the sickle-shaped claw on its foot, swings up and forward, aiming for the soft throat of its prey. Oh. What is the truth behind this legendary killer? How much of what we think we know is a movie-fueled myth? And what does the fossil evidence actually tell us about its life? Share in the comments which dinosaur myth you find most fascinating. Lou. Now, let's journey back in time and open the forgotten file of a single life. Our story's mm. first clue comes not from speculation, but from a single or breathtaking block of sandstone. In 1971, a Polish-Mongolian expedition was prospecting in the southern Gobi when they found it. A fossil unlike any other before or since. It was not just a collection of bones, but a preserved moment of behavior, dubbed their fighting dinosaurs. The fossil shows a velociraptor and a protoceratops locked in a mortal struggle. The herbivore's powerful parrot-like beak is clamped down, crushing the predator's right arm. The velociraptor, in turn, has its left foot planted against its foe, its three-and-a-half-inch, nine-centimeter killing claw driven deep into the neck region of the protoceratops. This was not a predator feasting on carrion. It was a snapshot of a deadly duel. It was the ultimate proof that velociraptor was a capable and ferocious hunter but it also presented a puzzle. There was no pack. It was a one-on-one -on -one fight to the end. This single fossil was the first piece of hard evidence that would begin to unravel the myth and reconstruct the reality of one of Earth's most famous predators. Slash, slash, processed, underscore, script. Let us rewind the clock leaving that fossilized duel behind and traveling deeper into the past. Your world is not one of combat, but of darkness and confinement. You are inside an elongated egg, buried in a shallow nest scooped out of the warm Gobi sand. The heat of the sun has incubated you for weeks. Driven by instinct, your tiny egg tooth, a feature shared by modern birds and reptiles, chips away the shell. With a final push, you emerge, not into a lush jungle, but onto the scorching, windswept sands of a vast desert. You are impossibly small, no bigger than a modern quail, and covered in a layer of fine, downy proto-feathers. These aren't the complex, vine feathers of your parents. This is a coat for survival designed to insulate you against the desert's extreme temperature swings from blistering days to near freezing nights. Your famous killing claw is present, but it is a tiny, soft hook, utterly useless as a weapon. Your legs are long, built for the life of a runner, but for now, they are wobbly and unsure. You are the opposite of the movie monster legend. You are a fragile fluffball in an unforgiving world Dangers are everywhere. Small, shrew-like mammals patrol the dunes, eager to raid a poorly guarded nest. Larger dinosaurs cast immense shadows that send you scurrying for the cover of sparse desert shrubs. Your first days are a blur of instinctual needs. The overwhelming drive to eat the small lizards and insects brought by a feathered parent, 
the need to huddle for warmth, and the constant thrumming fear of being spotted. Your life is a gamble against the elements and a host of predators. To survive here, you will need not brute force, but speed, intelligence, and a predator's cunning that is, for now, just a faint spark waiting to be kindled. The seasons of the desert have passed, marked by the shifting of the great dunes. You are no longer a downy chick. You are now a wiry, fast-moving adolescent, a creature of lethal purpose. Your body has been forged by the harsh realities of this environment. The simple down has been replaced by a coat of complex feathers, and most importantly, the arms you possess now bear long, veined quills. Direct fossil evidence, in the form of quill knobs found on the arm bones of your species, proves this beyond doubt. These are not for flight, but for control. They are your biological stabilizers, allowing you to make hairpin turns at full speed as you pursue prey through the rocky outcrops. You are a solitary hunter, your world defined by what you can catch and kill on your own. You spend your days stalking the small mammals and lizards that scurry between the sparse desert plants. And you are mastering your primary weapon, the killing claw. For years, a popular culture would imagine this as a slashing tool, a knife used to disembowel massive prey. The reality is more subtle and, frankly, more effective. Biomechanical studies show the claw was not built to withstand the stress of repeated slashing against a large, struggling animal. Instead, its strength was in piercing and pinning. You learn this through trial and error on smaller prey. You leap onto a victim, using your body weight to pin it to the ground. The claw acts as a grappling hook, a living crampon that digs deep into your struggling meal preventing any chance of escape while your sharp, serrated teeth go to work. This technique, known as raptor prey restraint, is a hunting style still used today by your distant cousins, the hawks the way that and they eagles, use their wings to maintain who use balance their talons in precisely their the same way. That's only seen in raptors. The myth of the pack hunter crumbles in the face of this solitary apprenticeship. They, you are becoming a master of a specialized, a one-on-one -on -one style of predation, perfectly adapted to the lonely expanses of the Gobi. You are now a fully grown adult, a feathered predator perfectly adapted to this harsh desert environment. Your senses are sharp, your body is a weapon, and you are at the peak of your power. And it is here that we must confront the biggest myth surrounding you. The idea of a coordinated pack of raptors running down and intelligently cornering large prey is a powerful cinematic fiction, but it is not your reality. The fossil record is the ultimate arbiter of truth, and for Velociraptor, it tells a story of a solitary life. There were no bone beds containing multiple individuals that died together. Your most famous fossil, Hamibin, the fighting dinosaurs, where it depicts a lone hunter the complex, cooperative pack hunting we associate with wolves is a highly specialized mammalian behavior with no true equivalent in your lineage. Your intelligence is not that of a strategist plotting a team ambush. It is the sharp, instinctual cunning of a lone assassin. You don't hunt through overwhelming numbers, but through surprise and specialized technique. You spot your prey a young, unwary protoceratops that has strayed from its family group. The hunt begins. You burst from behind a rocky outcrop, a low-slung, feathered missile. Your long legs eat up the distance as you close in. The prey bolts, but you are faster. As you leap onto its back, your feathered arms flare out, not for flight, but for balance a behavior known as stability flapping that allows you to stay upright on a violently struggling victim. The famous sickle claw on your foot does its true work. It pivots forward and drives down, not to slash, but to pierce and anchor. 
It is a grappling hook that pins your prey under your full body weight. This is the essence of raptor prey restraint. Once the animal is immobilized, your sharp, serrated teeth deliver quick, precise bites. It is an efficient, intimate, and brutal method. A one-on-one -on -one duel that is far more personal than the chaos of a pack attack. The myth is powerful, but the reality is a masterpiece of solitary predation. Years of successful hunts have made you a master of your domain. You are an older, more experienced predator, your feathers scarred from a lifetime of conflict. One fateful afternoon, you target a particularly large and formidable protoceratops, a powerful adult grazing at the base of a towering sand dune. The wind has undercut the dune's face, leaving a steep, unstable cliff of sand. You begin your stalk, confident in your abilities. The attack is a blur of calculated violence. You leap, just as you have hundreds of times before, landing squarely on the herbivore's flank. Your left foot lashes out, and the killing claw plunges deep into the soft tissue of the creature's neck. A perfect, lethal strike. But your prey does not go down easily. It is strong, and it fights back with desperate fury. As you cling to its side, it twists its powerful head and sinks its crushing turtle-like beak into your right arm. The bone snaps. The pain is blinding, but you cannot disengage. Your claw is hooked deep, and its beak holds you fast. You are locked together in a deadly embrace. The frantic struggle of two fighting animals weighing a combined several hundred pounds, churns the sand at the base of the unstable dune. It is the final trigger. With a low, groaning roar, the face of the dune gives way. A river of sand, thousands of tons of it, cascades down in an instant. There is no time to react. You and your adversary are slammed to the ground and buried together under the immense, suffocating light. The light the sound, the struggle, it all ends in a single moment of crushing pressure. Your final act of life is not one of victory or defeat, but of a shared, instantaneous doom. You are entombed, frozen in the very pose of your final, desperate battle. Your tomb is the very doom that caused your death. The catastrophic collapse did more than just end your life. It created the perfect conditions for your immortality. Unlike a slow burial in a river, where scavengers and currents would have scattered your bones, this landslide of sand entombed you and your foe instantly and completely. The fine-grained desert sand packed into every crevice, creating a perfect, high-fidelity mold of your final, violent pose. This rapid burial in an arid environment is the secret to the Gobi's incredible fossils. Over the following centuries, seasonal rains percolated through the sand, carrying a heavy load of dissolved minerals, primarily calcite. This mineral-rich water seeped into the microscopic pores of your bones. Molecule by molecule, the original calcium phosphate of your skeleton was replaced by the calcite, which crystallized and hardened turning your bones to stone. But this process did more than just preserve your remains. It preserved your story. The scene was locked in place. Your killing claw remained embedded in your prey's neck. Its beak stayed clamped on your broken arm. The geology of the desert was not just creating a fossil. It was preserving a narrative turning a moment of ferocious, dynamic action into a permanent, three-dimensional sculpture. You are now a single, solid block of stone, a tableau of life and death. For 75 million years, you lay in the darkness. The world above changes beyond recognition. The age of dinosaurs ends. The continents continue their slow dance and the collision of India with Asia pushes up the mighty Himalayas, forever altering the climate of the continent. Ice ages wax and wane. And finally, in a geological blink of an eye, a new kind of 
intelligent life emerges. All the while you wait, a silent action scene, a story written in bone and stone, waiting for erosion to peel back the layers and reveal you to a new world. 75 million years after the sand buried you, the persistent Gobi wind finally uncovers a small corner of your tomb. In 1971, a team of paleontologists scanning the desolate landscape spots the telltale white of your fossilized bones against the red sandstone. The excavation reveals something extraordinary. Not just a skeleton, but a story. Your fossil, the fighting dinosaurs, is brought into the light of a new world and becomes one of the most famous paleontological discoveries in history. In the lab, as preparators carefully chip away the surrounding rock, the myth of the pack hunter begins to die. The evidence is clear. You were a solitary hunter, bold enough to take on dangerous prey, and you paid the ultimate price. But this was only part of the story. Another discovery would complete your resurrection on a different Velociraptor fossil. Scientists identified a series of small, regularly spaced bumps along the ulna, one of the bones in the forearm. These were undeniable quill knobs, the exact same structures that anchor the large flight feathers to the bones of modern birds. This was the smoking gun. The scaly, reptilian monster of popular fiction was gone forever, replaced by the feathered, bird-like reality. These two lines of evidence, a fossil of your behavior and a fossil of your anatomy, converge to paint a new, scientifically accurate portrait. The true you was not a six-foot-tall movie monster, but a feathered, turkey-sized predator whose closest modern analogs are hawks and eagles. Your life was a testament to the success of a solitary ambush predator, and your legacy is a direct link in the evolutionary chain that connects the fearsome dinosaurs of the Mesozoic to the birds that fill our skies today. The story of Velociraptor is a powerful lesson in how science works. A creature is unearthed, captured by the public imagination, and transformed into a cultural icon, a myth. But the real animal lay waiting in the stone, holding the clues to its true nature. The patient work of discovery and analysis slowly chipped away at the fiction not to diminish the creature but to reveal a truth that is, in its own way, far more wondrous. The real Velociraptor, with its intricate feathers and its hunting techniques mirrored by the eagles of today, is a more compelling character than any movie monster. It is a direct, tangible link to the deep past, a reminder that the birds outside our windows are the living descendants of these ancient hunters. The file on this one life, frozen in combat beneath a collapsing dune, has allowed us to replace a thrilling fantasy with an even more thrilling reality, showcasing the beautiful, complex, and often surprising path that life takes.